I'm Lily Lynn. I uh, play bass in a couple bands in town. I play in Tito and Tarantula, Gilded Lows, Carrie Fussell, um, a couple other bands. And I have my solo project, which is called Lily Lynn. Uh, yeah, and I'm best basses of the year. Normally I bring the award with me and then hold it up on the side of the thing. But I was doing about, I wanna say three to four shows a week and doing probably two sessions a week. Um, it was a lot, it was definitely too much. I was really tired and I kind of didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but I really enjoyed kind of the hustle of it, but it was hard for me to really evaluate the purpose of what I was doing as far as playing music. Uh, my name is Mike Manowitz. Uh, I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm a developer for South by Southwest and a uh, front of house audio engineer and a uh, musician. And um, yeah, <laughs> most people in the scene know me is because I shoot photos and I'm at a lot of shows. And uh, there were shows I would go to anyway because I enjoyed them. And I just started bringing a camera and shooting photos all over the place. and. So I was shooting photos. I was running sound for a bunch of bands between that and my day job with South by Southwest is a big music festival. Uh, it's kind of like I would do that all day and then come home and eat some dinner and then uh, run out and run around till 2 a.m. and then do it again uh, several nights a week, probably too many nights a week. But uh, My name is Tito Lariva, and I've been a musician most of my life. And that's what I do. I play music for people. We usually tour a, at least a month and a half or three months a year. And we prepare the whole year for the tour. Uh, we uh, mostly tour in Europe, uh, at least for the last 23 years. It's all been Europe and Eastern Bloc countries, like Russia and stuff like that. So it takes a lot of preparation because there's a big, uh, there's about 10 people on our crew um, and band. And so we need to prepare all of that and it takes a long time. I think before COVID it was extremely lively and really underpaid. Uh, everybody was struggling, uh, and we were all sort of fighting amongst ourselves. There was a lot of petty sort of rivalries for sort of not that great gigs. When it was rip roaring on any given night, weeknight, weekend, uh, in Austin, there were 10 or 15 pretty well attended shows, I would say. Um, and it was, um, you know, what was the, the term an embarrassment of riches it was uh it was incredible um there was just a million things going on um but you know on top of that because there was so much like people weren't making that much money because venues could hire somebody that has a very good band that's trying to get started uh for less money or almost no money or sometimes no money or sometimes the bands had to pay to get on the show uh, and it wasn't really that equitable. The venues have a hard time with rent, uh, but it wasn't that sustainable. Um, and there were a lot of gaps in in uh, people trying to make a living. Almost all the musicians I know were working service industry jobs. Um, and then all the support staff for the venues, they you know, it's not a super well paid uh, job, you know, because it's a it's a thing that people don't really think takes a lot of work or a lot of energy or a lot of money, and that it just happens. People don't really think about the people that are, you know, putting up the, the stages and the lights and the microphones and stuff, stuff like that. They think it just happens, I guess. I don't know. There's like a million people around, um, and everybody's got to kind of like split the pot of what's coming in the door. Um, and because there was so much, they couldn't, they didn't charge that much because if you're charging five dollars and the person next door is charging three dollars, like sometimes people go to the three dollar show because everybody's broke. Um, so it was tough, but it was it was really uh, 
is really cool to be a part of. Um, but there was also a lot of beautiful things because there was so much good music. Everybody got to kind of incubate their ideas and, uh, yeah, it was, it's really fun to watch a lot of high caliber musicians kind of working at peak efficiency, um, and hustling super hard, not necessarily for money or monetary gain. It was cool. I guess the, the financial aspect is really bad because everyone's not working, the crew included. So that was really hard. Um, I, yeah, I would say South by canceling had uh, a, you know, it was just left a, a crater in the music economy of Austin because that pays a lot of people's bills for the year, a lot of venues, a lot of people. The economy really shouldn't be based on one festival, and I think we didn't really realize how much it was based on one festival. So basically they were paying their rent for the entire year for a couple weeks in March, and it's kind of not a sustainable business model for anybody. So, There's, uh, I guess, this... Uh I don't know if it's not uh, like a kind of an understanding of how volatile everything really is and how everything's pretty unpredictable. You you know that, but then when it really when it actually happens, it's kind of like who <laughs> uh, the hugs are tighter. The you know the uh, the letters are more sincere. Uh, you're cut to the chase and not you know kind of bullshit your way through it because there you realize ho oh, yeah i could you know i could have got it i could be dead my friends died some of my friends died from it um it's just a kind of a i don't, I, I guess for lack of a better word a wake up call to kind of not bullshit yourself anymore and get get down to being a human. <laughs> the main thing that we've been noticing is sort of this idea of mutual aid, um, which as a concept I, I don't think was really being talked about in my life uh, before coronavirus, but it was basically like a lot of people need a lot of help and it's going to take all of us. We can't wait for the government to get their shit together and get everybody happy. Like we need to like, if you have something to offer, you need to try and help your peers and your friends and strangers. You know, there was um, a lot of musicians that couldn't pay rent, that couldn't buy food. Uh, the Red River Cultural District um, organized HEB gift cards for musicians. Um, City of Austin did some uh, grants. Live music will come back. I think it will never be the same. I, I think people are never going to really think about standing as close to people in the same way that we used to. It used to sort of be this thing that we took for granted. And now I think we all have seen how quickly that can be taken away. I also think hopefully we're participating in more kind of inclusive and lucrative ways of playing shows. I, I don't really want to go back to how things were like just gigging just for the sake of gigging. And, um, I hope that other people are feeling like I'm feeling. I'm happy that a lot of our favorite places have survived and a lot of them have changed and, and that's good because, uh, some, of, some of the places really kind of needed some change. Um, and hopefully it'll be a little more equitable. Uh, it'll be, a little more accessible um, and more more sustainable. And I think making sure that we appreciate that musicians are, that's their job and we're paying them to do it. And we make sure that we pay them in a way that's sustainable, that we can have musicians.
Right. 